sketchbook tour. This is like number six or seven, eight. I don't know. No, um, I think it's. I think it's probably seven or something. I don't know. On this sketchbook, uh, I like to put stickers and things on them to identify them because they all look the same. Um, on this one, I took some of these little. I don't know what they are. They're like trading cards from a uh, like a Japanese dollar store. My friend gave them to me. They have like, if anybody knows what these are, let me know. But anyways, I just glued one on there and I really like it. It's a nice um, identifier. It's kind of got the same like tone as the background. So it's on like a little piece of cardboard or something. Nice. I have no idea what that says either. If anybody speaks Japanese and wants to uh, help me out there. This one went from June 21st to July 25th. It's about a month. It's pretty standard for these. Um, a lot of the stuff in here is, uh, homework for Peter Hahn's various classes. Um, a lot of it's dynamic sketching extension. Great class, recommend it. Uh, take the other ones first, obviously, but, and then, um, some more recent stuff in here is... No, actually, it's pretty much all for that. Oh, no, and then there's some for um, the mentorship, which I'm now doing under him as well. But started in this book with some uh, World War II planes. So here's the Spitfire, kind of using lots of iterations and different sizes to kind of nail down what the the form of the plane is. Um, start with the side view, just ignore the wings. It's really easy that way, and kind of just shave on, make it like a cigar, and then just keep adding on parts. And I use a marker for these. I don't use marker often. But for mechanical things, it's really useful because um, it can really clog up uh, the drawing with all the different construction lines. But if you use a marker, it's pretty easy. And then you just put in the correct line at the end. I think one of the problems I had this week was I would rely too much on the marker instead of adjusting from there or making a nice, um, nice drawing. I would just trace the marker, basically. Um, but that's supposed to just be like construction data. Another problem I had with these planes was um, I didn't put enough detail. The previous week I had drawn about 9,000 birds and I put way too much detail on them. And for study's sake, um, that's not a plane, obviously. Um, for studying's sake, you don't need to render every single sketch. If you're just studying the subject, like if you know how to draw feathers on the first one, you're, it's pretty obvious that the rest of them are also going to be feathered. So you don't need to go through and feather every single one. Think of all the sketches like a package. So I was kind of burnt out from that because I did render every one. So when I got to the planes this week, which are sort of adjacent to birds um, in construction, I was like, I don't want to put too much detail on. I'm just going to leave it nice and chill. But what ended up happening is they look like, uh, they look like toys. They don't have any rivets, screws, seam lines between the metal. Um, you know, even painting. Hi, Tord. How's it going? But I still got to study and learn a lot about all this stuff, which is cool. And I also think I'd be a lot better at drawing planes from imagination because I kind of have a formula now of how to construct them. So, but you can see this looks really flat. There's like no detail on it at all. It kind of looks like a big toy. Hi, Tord. Stop yelling at me, please. That's a really cool plan. It's just massive. It's so big. I did a little bit of marker on some of them. But that makes it look even more like a toy. You know, there should be a lot more like reflections and, you know, uh, insignia, decals. Whenever I look through these later, I always just think to myself, like, why didn't I just make it like simpler in form and then at the, I don't know, it's like my silhouette is always so complex and I, sometimes I just wish that it was a little bit simpler. Um, I don't need to copy the reference so much. I can just kind of simplify a lot of the information into one curve, one line, instead of trying to trace every tiny plane change, no pun intended. This is the plane from Porco Rosso, his rival flies. I actually like this page a lot. It's nice.
Uh, here is the A10 Warthog. This one, because of this like bright highlight on the edge, it seriously looks like a toy plane. It looks like a model. It's so round and squishy. It's like a super aggressive warplane, but I made it kind of cute. This was trying to draw this from memory. I did all right. Oh, and then here's another one. Uh, a little bit more rendering on this one. Still looks pretty soft, though. If I just put more lines in, more not lines, more um, like decals, rivets, things like that, seam lines, it would look a lot, a lot more accurate, I think. Then we moved into environments. I really enjoyed this week because you can take a ref and move parts of it around really easily in um, an environment because there's so many individual objects. And so you can kind of manipulate the scene to look more pleasing, more interesting. So I, I do like a thumbnail. I try to block out with the X's where there's going to be darks. Um, I usually move stuff around so it, you know, looks cleaner. doesn't look like it doesn't belong somewhere. Because I get to make all the decisions since I'm the one drawing it. Torby really wants me to throw this piece of trash for him. Bring it here, I'll throw it. This, I should have done a couple more uh, thumbnails of these trees before I committed to doing them like that because they look pretty messy. But everything else in the scene hits pretty nicely. It does feel like you're in it, which I like. Hard thing to achieve. Uh, this was a... I don't know what this was. I think I was looking at my old Lee J. Ames How to Draw 50 Dinosaurs book. I do need to go into like a, a detailed week of drawing dinosaurs at some point because I know nothing about them. I could have simplified or just left out a lot of the details in these desert pieces that I'm about to show you. You don't need to even add everything when you look at a landscape like this. I do like the super high contrast areas though on this one. This is my favorite from this week. It just turned out really nicely. I definitely moved some things. I can see from my initial thumbnail, there was a tree like right here. But I wanted to kind of line it up more with where the focal point is. Everything kind of pulls your eye in here. And so I wanted to put the big tree right there. You get nice curves up into that window, basically. Very nice. This was a 10 minute sketch request of a uh, gray wolf. I should have written it on there. I think it's just a gray wolf. I've drawn very few uh, doggies, and so uh, Finesse Fantasy, one of my Twitch viewers, has been requesting many. This is actually on a Twitch stream. They're here now. <laughs> <laughs> they just requested another, uh, not a dog this time, but good way to stay loose. Uh, we got some bonsai trees. These are kind of rough. I think I was really hangry when I was drawing these, and so they didn't really work as well as I wanted them to. Got a lot of sparse trees. I need to not... Again, it's like... I'm in control. I need to concentrate the details. This one, I saw this kind of cool yin and yang thing happening in this thumbnail. Or even this one, you can kind of still see it. So I tried to really bring that out in the final. Really high contrast as well. And this is the last one I did for that week. Really cool castle. That one turned out pretty well. So much hatching though. Got to be so many better ways to do that without destroying my wrist. A better focal point would have been nicer. I could have just left out some of this hatching, you know, kept it form based on the edges, but it's okay. Uh, then I went to brush pen week for that class. 
we could pretty much study anything we wanted. We just needed to mess around with the brush pen. So here's a, a V8 engine. <laughs> uh, oh boy. This is kind of cringe. Someone told me to draw a chibi version of myself. I've never done that ever in my life. It's very far from the kind of thing I usually draw. So that happened. And then um, they said the eyes were too, too detailed. So then that happened. Then they were too small. So then that happened. Still too small. Yeah, don't worry about it. We did some costuming. This is a really fun action. This is such a fun thing to do, studying uniforms and costumes and um, things from history. It's kind of like a melding of a couple of different practices, like figure drawing, characters, and also drapery. That was a sketch request as well, Tanuki. Very cute animal. Some more costumes. Some more costumes. Even more costumes. I think this one's my favorite. I really like learning about these. Um, the history, if you don't know, look up the, uh, the Mamelukes. Really crazy history. Another sketch request. Actually, this one was drawing a jackalope with no reference, and then I found a reference. I did not realize hares had such bulgy eyes. Page boxes. Good to keep fresh doing those. I need to do it more often, to be honest. Here's Deckard's Pistol. Every Saturday night I do like a Saturday sketch night on my Twitch stream. And we kind of vote down to a topic and then do it. So we did um, this pistol. A couple, a couple versions of it. Here's another sketch request of a, a dog. A bush dog. These are really weird. They kind of look like uh, almost like mongoose. And these are 10 minutes. Some monkeys for fun. Gibbons. Uh, I was going through a hard course. Still am. But pirates are cool. I've never studied them before. Know nothing about them really before this. So I watched every Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Playing Sea of Thieves like crazy. Read a bunch of articles, looked up a bunch of the costumes, figured out how the ships were built. Just kind of went crazy for a week. Um, drew a big pirate throne room for one of my classes. Um, so this is Gibbs from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Here's another dog. I cannot remember what this one's called. Maybe my Twitch chat can help me out. It's like the long... No, it's like... I don't remember what it's called, but it's got super long legs. It's on stilts. <laughs> These are some organic form studies. I feel like this was yesterday. But I guess it was like a week ago. More form studies. Here is a... Ikebon. Oh yeah, this is now my mentorship is starting and we did a bunch of... Uh, primates this week we're kind of focusing on a project my warrior primates thing where we're going to be combining like world war ii scenes with primates nothing super special we are trying to focus on form specifically not so much the texture in the line because that's a problem i have um so yeah these are very form-based drawings which makes it a lot easier to remember how to draw them not having to remember all the details on top Did a 
of mandrel. They're very terrifying animals. Very interesting the way their function is. Like their body changes colors as they become the alpha or not. Like if they lose their alpha status, their body goes back to being boring colored. But when they are the alpha, they look like this. It's very strange. It's strange to see that in like a mammal. I feel like it exists in like fish and reptiles and things, being able to change color like that. But with mammals, it seems kind of rare. I don't know. There's a lemur. These are hard to draw. There's no clear images of their face. Their skull is very planar, but their face is not. It's very soft, so it's hard to find that form and be able to rotate it. So I just zoomed in really close on a bunch of images of them and tried to capture it. This one worked out all right. Both of these are nice drawings. I like that. Very form-based. I feel like I can see this in my head, like, because of how, you know, geometric it is, I can remember it way easier and visualize this pose, this face in my head a lot easier, which is the point, so that's good, it's working. This is a very scary little animal, tiny little marmoset. Um, this is actually what it looks like. It looks like a weird alien face, but it's actually its face. It has kind of like a skull coloring with really dark eyes, dark nose, dark mouth, um, cheekbones, but it's just the coloring of its face. It's not actually face paint. Right, that's a, a, like a five minute no reference monkey with the gun. This is what I'm working towards improving by doing everything else I just showed you. I want to be able to spitball quickly new ideas, new drawings from my head. That's a f poor attempt. If I spent a little more time, it could probably be better. But still, that's the goal, is to make that better by doing all of that. This was another sketch request. This was um, a f Chinese uh, pirate captain from history. Right, getting towards the end here, this is a uh, bonobo. We got, uh, they're like a slender, less aggressive ape. A couple pages of those, but it's very hard to find bonobo skeletons. I can only find chimp skeletons, and they are pretty different. So I kind of just modified a chimp skeleton to what I th thought felt right. Uh, but the, the, the elements are largely the same, it's just the proportioning is a little different. They have longer legs, smaller heads. Here's some form-based heads as well. More form. Also just using a brush pen to like block in shadows. Uh -huh. Treat it more graphically. I really like this pose. I don't know why, but just it, for me, it really works. Even if it's a little messy. With the lines. I just like the pose. And then uh, just this last week um, I did costuming because this is like the next step. We're going to combine the costuming with the primates. These are from memory. Drawing some gibbons. Again trying to be form based. Do some different angles with no reference. These are form intersections. So this is how you construct stuff. But basically, when you put two shapes over each other, it's impossible to know which is in front if you draw them all the edges. So you can then cut into them like this. And it's kind of hard to explain, but it's good practice really helps with the visualization skills. And then of course, every single sketchbook ends with the Star Wars drawing. So this is a TIE fighter pilot. I'm not really sure how I feel about all this. I don't know what 
my brain was doing when I decided to do the cockpit like that, but all in all, I like the drawing. And that's the sketchbook. We're already like 15 pages into the next one.